Tank Jello. It's mmm mmm good. Stay tuned. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics. How is each and every one of you guys doing? So, you're looking around, you're thinking, what in the heck is going on? Is this the Jadron Aquatics cooking show? No! It's not the Jadron Aquatic cooking show, even though it appears to be cooking. We are going to make up some yummy, yummy tank jello. Now, you guys may have seen this stuff before. People call it snail jello, but I've learned that all of my fish absolutely love this stuff to death. So, I'm going to show you guys how I make it. People make it a little bit different ways. I make a lot of it at a time. Some people just make little bits of it at a time, but I go through a ton of it, especially when I'm trying to grow mystery snails up. Mystery snails love this stuff, absolutely devour it. It's crazy how quickly I can put it in there and it can be gone. The other thing that's kind of cool about this stuff is that it's uh, it's got a gelatin base to it. So when you put it in the in the in in your tank, it'll sit in there sometimes for two or three days if they don't eat it uh, because that gelatin kind of holds it together and it'll it'll slowly release some of the uh, the calcium that's in there. And so it's also really good for uh, most of your tanks, especially the ones that have like guppies in it that are breeding, is those guppy females when they have babies and stuff all the time, it uses up a tremendous amount of calcium in their body. So this is kind of another good way for them to get some extra calcium supplement, whether it's what, what's getting actually into the water or as they're picking and eating this stuff, that's the, uh, they're getting in the calcium they need from that also. So. What in the world do you need to make this tank jello? Well, I'm glad you ask. First thing that you need, you need two cans of peas, okay? Just plain Jane sweet peas. I get these knockoff brand Kroger. Um, you can use other things. You can use like French green beans or any other type of vegetable, but these mush up the easiest and these are a whole lot easier to get in the blender and get all mixed up. So these are the ones that I use. If you're going to make smaller amounts, then you can use baby food. Uh, of course, the baby food is already all ground up for you and it's already in a paste, but that stuff is expensive. And again, I go through a lot of this stuff, so that's why I use it in the cans. The next thing that we need, we need uh, some type of gelatin base to give it that jello uh, base to it or jello feel to it. Um, the kind that I use is this is just something I get off of uh, Amazon because I, I like to buy it in bulk. This is just beef gelatin powder. It can be any kind of gelatin powder. It can be the unflavored. The most common kind you'll see just in your regular grocery stores, I think this is a Knox brand, uh, unflavored gelatin. It comes in a little packet. You can use that stuff. It really doesn't matter as long as it's some type of gelatin base. Uh, the next thing you need is some type of calcium. Again, I go through a lot of it, so I buy this whole bag of calcium carbonate. I think this stuff is just basically like white chalk. Some people must use it to lower acidity because that's what the instructions say on the front of it. But if you don't want to buy this much, and again, you're making smaller amounts, some people will just take buy a thing of Tums and crush the Tums up. Just get the white ones. I don't know if you need the color ones. It, it actually probably doesn't matter, but it's probably safer just to get the white ones so it doesn't cloud up your water. Take those, crunch those things down, get them into a powder form, and you can use those just as easy. And some other extra ingredients that you can add um, this is kind of just make it as you want to. One of the things that I like to use in it is uh, spirulina. Uh, you can buy this in powder form, but I bought this a long time ago to use in some beef heart mixtures that I was making for discus at one time, so I've still got like a whole bottle of this stuff left. So I just take some of these and I crush them down and put them in there. The fish love this stuff, as you guys probably already know. There's a lot of different foods you can buy that have the spirulina already in it. And then, um, Excess fish food that you still have laying around or say you got some fish food that your fish didn't like Take all that, you know, we got we got all, all sorts of kinds of excess fish food that we've had And then this is some tetra stuff that I bought one time that I didn't so much care for and you know all of those samples You always get so every time I buy a tank from from PetSmart not PetSmart from Petco Petco is that right? Yeah, Petco dollar a dollar a gallon tank sale. They always come with some a sample water conditioner and a sample of tropical flakes. So I got a, a bunch of these things. So I like to throw those things in there too. 
Um, again, that's just some extra added stuff that you can put in there. I know that are people that will use uh, uh, like bee pollen. Uh, they'll also use different powder forms of brine shrimp, blood worms, uh, mysis shrimp, um, and just again, any kind of fish food that you can put in there. That stuff, it doesn't really, you don't really have to measure it that much. Obviously, you don't want to overload it, but the amount you put in there is really not that that big of a deal. And then the most important thing that you have to have, you have to make sure that your calendar is on the correct month. Yes, the month of November, unless you're watching this in a different time and the calendar's wrong. Okay, calendar doesn't matter what it is on. I just know everyone likes to complain that when I film a video, the calendar's on the wrong date. So let's hope that I release this calendar in November or this is gonna be really weird that I just pointed that out. Okay, so what else do we need? What are the different devices we need to get this stuff mixed up? The first thing you need is a blender. So we got a blender here. So funny story behind this blender, well, funny now, not funny then, was I took, this, I took my wife's blender and uh, I was making some beef heart mixture and uh, if you've ever tried to buy beef heart before, that is some difficult stuff to try to buy. It's like trying to buy crack cocaine or something like. We went to like 12 different stores to try to find it. And I finally found it at some Hispanic grocery store, bought a big beef heart. But that's a whole other story that'll be saved for another day. So, beef heart, Jason. I took this and I had to grind the beef heart up. Let me tell you, the wife was not pleased. Not pleased at all. So guess what? Jason got to buy his wife a new blender because this blender was never gonna be used in the kitchen ever again. So. Your blender, so now I have a dedicated blender just for the fish room. Okay, the next thing that you need, you need some way to warm it up, whether that's a microwave or a stove, because you're gonna warm up the, uh, the peas. And then the next thing that you need is some type of mold to pour them in. So I've got a bunch of different uh, silicone rubber molds. In fact, I've even got these cool ones that are shaped like fish. You guys might remember at one of the auctions, somebody had these. And so I paid like $2 for like six of them. But I don't like them at all because they don't cut up very well. Like this, when you put the food in here and it comes out as this perfect thing, you can cut it in little sections. This thing is not very uniform. So not a fan of those, not gonna use those anymore. So we're gonna keep using these. Okay, first thing we wanna do is take the peas, open them up, pour them in a bowl, and then put them in the microwave and heat them up until they are boiling. So let's go ahead and let's do that. All right, so we're back with the uh, heated up peas. So one of the things I like to do is I like to leave about a half of can of water in there. That way it's easier for them to get stirred up. And when you put them in the blender, especially a cheap blender like this, they like to get clogged. And you know how it is when, you, when the blender's going, it's like spinning and nothing's actually happening. So I like to leave a little bit of water in there so that it can uh, blend it all up. So let's go ahead and uh, put all of this in here. Now remember with this recipe, I'll, I'll link it down below. Um, you guys can change it however you want. You know, make a lot less, just you know, divide it out by ever how many portions that you want to make. Oh yeah, that looks yummy. Mmm, yeah. Look at that, mmm. That's disgusting, <laughs> that's what it is. All right. Let's fast forward through this part because I know the last thing you guys want to hear is a blender. Okay, so we got it uh, all done now. The part you guys missed is when I tried to turn on the blender, it wouldn't work. I had to take it down to the garage, like tear it apart and figure out what's wrong. It's like the blade was all frozen up. But I, I, I didn't let you guys see that because I know you don't care about that. So um, I had to add a little bit more water to it again. If it's not, if it's not enough liquid in there, this stuff won't, won't uh, blend up worth anything. So you pretty much want it to look like uh, mashed potatoes or baby food. Okay, so the next thing that you need to put in there is you need to take the gelatin. And uh, the gelatin, you're gonna need 14 tablespoons of gelatin. Again, we've got two cans of peas and now we've got 14 tablespoons of gelatin. I've got my handy dandy uh, aquarium co-op uh, shot glass that measures just about everything. So 14 tablespoons. 14. All right, then we're gonna blend it some more. If you guys are making smaller amounts, you don't have to actually use a blender. You can mix it up by hand. 
It's just this gelatin stuff. You want to get it mixed up good because it wants to clump almost immediately. That's the reason you got to get this stuff boiling hot so that this gelatin, the gelatin will, uh, will uh, dissolve. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is use our calcium, so uh, or your tums, whatever you want to use. We need six tablespoons of this. Just made a mess. I was carrying this stuff upstairs. My wife was like, where are you taking that? I'm like, I'm taking it to film. She just shook her head. I'm like, I'm going to try not to make a mess. All right, let's uh, stir, stir this up and get the blender going on this one. Again, you're just uh, mixing at this at this point, so just as long as it gets mixed up. And now you can add, you know, whatever e extra you want. So like, I'm not. You don't even have to measure this stuff. Like the ingredients, the measurements aren't that big of a deal. It, the gelatin is pretty much the only thing that's kind of the big deal. You can obviously go overboard on some things, but as far as the excess fish food, you know, pour uh, some in there, and then some of your extra free tropical flakes and so on and so forth. And then uh, the spirulina, I usually like to take about, mm, I usually take about four or five of these and crush them up and put those in there also. All right, so we've got everything, all the ingredients mixed up. So now we are ready to take it and to put it into our ice cube trays. You guys should smell this room. Oh, it smells disgusting. I mean, it, it reeks in here. I'm not used to making this stuff where I shut the door, so it's like overwhelming fish food, baby peas, stinky. Okay, so all you're simply gonna do is take this stuff and pour it into your molds just like you would do any other type of molds. And then we are going to take this down and we're gonna put it in the freezer. I usually let it freeze for probably about three or four hours. You can let it sit overnight, it doesn't really matter. And then uh, you have the choice. It depends on how fast you go through it. If you wanna leave some of them in the freezer so that it lasts longer, because this stuff will start to mold probably after mm, six or seven days would be my guess. Uh, so you might wanna leave some in the freezer and keep one out or ever how fast you go through it. But you need to start off in the freezer to get that all congealed and then you can take it out and put it in the refrigerator. So let's go ahead and get these filled up and get them taken down and put into the freezer. All right, so here it is, out of the freezer. So let's pop one of these puppies out and let's uh, see what it looks like. So see, it's uh, it's like, see what, it kind of bounces like it's like it's rubber. So that's one of them. So I cut that into pieces and put that down in the tank. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take it down and let's put it in some different tanks so you guys can see just how excited the fish are about it. Thanks again guys for stopping by. I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys have any comments you want to leave down below. You got some other food that you guys use or if there's other things that you add uh, to some other recipes, be sure and leave that down below. Love to hear what you guys are actually doing. You guys haven't subscribed to my channel already. I'd love for you guys to click the subscribe button. So thanks again guys and God bless.